This is Gareth from Creative Connors. In today's short movie, we're going to look at running queues in SpikeMark. To run a queue in SpikeMark, the first thing you need to do is load it. There are a few ways to load queues. One of the easiest is to press the Load Queue button in the queue grid. The queue is loaded. We see where the motors are going to be running to. And now we can execute those queue by pressing the Run button on the queue controller. As you can see, status information for the queue is updated in both the status bar and in the queue controller window. As motors complete moving, their outlines turn from green to blue, indicating that they're now complete. Once all motors are complete in the queue, the queue outline in the queue grid turns blue. To load the next queue, we can press the Next Queue button. This will load the next queue in the show sequence. To run it, I could press the Run Queue button again here, or press the Run Queue button on my Showstopper base station. But instead, I'm going to select Run Queue from the menu. As you can see, Run Queue from the menu also has an F key equivalent. This makes it easy to run a show without a Showstopper base station nearby, but using the F keys on your keyboard so you don't have to use your mouse. While this queue is running, I'm going to load up Q3 and execute it. This is known as pile on queuing. I can run multiple queues at the same time just by loading them and executing them. This is great in shows where you have a sequence of queues that need to run at the same time, but perhaps from night to night, the sequence differs. For instance, if it's actor driven, or perhaps the stage manager has to call the queue you can't write an automated link in that instance, but you still want them to be able to execute in a staggered fashion. All right, let's now load up Q5. I want to skip over Q4. Let's say I'm in the tech rehearsal process, and Q4 doesn't need to be run. To jump to that queue, I could just as easily press the Load Queue button on the queue grid, or press the Jump to Queue button here on the queue controller. This brings up a list of all the queues in the show and allows me to select which queue I'd like to run. I select Q5 and press OK. Q5 and Q6 are linked together by time, and as you can see, Q6 executed two seconds after Q5 had started. Now if I wanted to, I could pile on Q7 and run it. Let's say I needed to stop Q7 at this point. I can press the Stop Q button, and that slowly decelerates the Q to a stop. It takes the programmed acceleration rate, which we can see here, as 10 inches per second per second, and applies that deceleration rate immediately. This works whether I'm running one Q or maybe even multiple Qs. Here I've got two Qs running. I can press the Stop button and both motors stop. All three queues now show a fault status as indicated by the yellow outline. The fault status is displayed anytime you stop the motors with an emergency stop or with the soft stop on screen. Another reason why you might see a fault status would be a limit switch being engaged or perhaps a position error fault. The fault status will clear as soon as the motors are loaded in another queue. The turntable has now been loaded in Q6, and its fault status from Q8 goes away. That wraps up our look at running queues in SpikeMark. As you can see, SpikeMark makes running queues a pretty easy endeavor.